When we started operating our short-term rental in San Diego in 2018, short-term rental regulations were kind of a joke. STRs were required then to have a permit and to pay occupancy tax to the city, which we did, but a lot of people were operating illegally and there wasn't a lot of enforcement. Basically no enforcement. <laughs> Who's in charge here? Over the last five years, we've watched the city try and try again to come up with some kind of more robust short-term rental program. But for one reason or another, they haven't. Hadn't. Hadn't. At least until last year, when they finally passed a new set of regulations that forced us to completely change up our rental strategy. What's up guys, I'm Steven. And I'm Kylie. And the property that we are referring to is one unit of a duplex property in San Diego. It's the first property, investment property that we purchased together as a couple and one that we lived in and house hacked for a few years when we were first getting started. The property is in Mission Beach area of San Diego, which historically has been a very touristy area full of vacation rentals and student rentals. My family and I I used to rent a house there when I was a kid. That was a long time ago. So it's not like the concept of vacation rentals in this area are new or were brought about by the blooming of Airbnb. So last year when the city made this announcement, their policy was gonna be a 1% cap of the housing stock in San Diego would be eligible for short-term rentals. We were shocked. Thankfully, they made Mission Beach an exemption area, giving us a 30% cap in the area as opposed to the 1% for the rest of the city. The way this would break down is hypothetically, if there were a thousand homes in Mission Beach, 300 would be eligible to get a short-term rental permit. And that 30% cap actually aligned pretty closely to the number of existing rentals in the area, or so we thought, and at least the ones that were legally operating at the time. I've made a critical error on my Airbnb reservation. The second part of the city's announcement was that there would be a lottery for who received the permit. This would be a weighted lottery ran every two years. So if you were drawn in this lottery, that doesn't mean that you would be drawn again in two years. And if you weren't drawn, it means that you have to wait two years to try again. Or be on a wait list. The weighted lottery part sounded good to us because we'd been, you know, rule followers and paying our tot and doing the right things and not any violations. So we should get all of the weighted points in the lottery. No brainer, we would have that permit. But then the unthinkable happened. So in Mission Beach, where 30% of the housing stock could apply for and receive a permit, there were 1,290 applications received and entered into the lottery. And of those 1,290 applications, 1,082 properties were given permits. Which means that 208 applicants were not picked and not given a short-term rental permit for the next two years at least. And as you can probably guess by the title of this video, we were in that 208. Even with our clean track record and years of taught history. To help with the weighted lottery. Oh man, that sucks. Not only do we not get picked, we're like number 180 out of 208 on the wait list to receive a permit. Luck was not on our side during that drawing. Shouldn't be in Vegas. Some guys just can't handle Vegas. Initially, we were really disappointed and we still kind of are, but- More just shocked. <laughs> yeah, we are surprised. So we decided to sort of convert this into a midterm rental slash partial short-term rental hybrid, which the regulations allow. We'll describe more in a minute. We've told some friends and family the story and how bad our luck was. And a lot of them have asked us, why not just turn their property into a long-term rental or a student rental? I think this is because the concept of a midterm rental or a monthly furnished rental is relatively new, especially to people who aren't immersed in the rental business like we are. Midterm rentals, sometimes they're called medium-term rentals or monthly furnished rentals are just that. They are are properties that are set up just like an STR, just like a short-term rental, but usually listed for a minimum of 30 nights. We've had a lot of experience with midterm rentals because local regulations and a few of the cities that we operate have forced that. So if people want to invest in those cities, except for a few exemption areas, 30 days or more is the current requirement. And right now we're managing 12 midterm rentals in the greater Palm Springs area. Every city is different and there's usually some threshold where longer than that, the rental is considered a long-term rental and therefore the city's short-term rental regulations don't apply. In most cases, that's 30 nights. And they're treated at that point more like a long-term rental as far as the city is concerned. Yeah. This is an area, maybe kind of a gray area that may see more regulation in the future. But for now, it's been a great option for some of our clients. This year, we've actually seen a midterm rental outperform a comparable short-term rental in the same city. 
We did a whole video a while back about the benefits of operating a midterm rental, and we'll link that at the end of this video. Let us know in the comments if you'd like to see a part two on this video, maybe more about midterm rentals. We were thinking that with enough backing, maybe we could convince a client to let us share some financial details and occupancy information and all the behind the scenes on performance data. So while we were disappointed that we didn't get the lottery of the San Diego permit at our Mission Beach property, we weren't really scared off by the concept of how to effectively operate a midterm rental. We ended up applying for and receiving a different tier of permit, and this particular permit will allow us to operate as a short-term rental for 90 days out of the year. So we'll do that during June, July, August peak season, and then starting in September through this next summer, we'll operate as a monthly rental. The new regulations just took effect in May, so we've got a couple weeks of downtime before that 90 day short-term rental clock starts in June. So we're using this downtime to enjoy the place ourselves with our family and also get a couple projects done before our busy summer season starts and then before we have month-long guests there in the fall. First thing we'll be doing is adding a mini split air conditioner slash heater heat pump. We replaced the roof in the fall of last year and also added insulation to the roof and that has helped a lot keeping the place cool in the summer and warmer in the winter. But on the warmest of summer days even right at the beach it can still get a little uncomfortable in there. We've always provided a portable AC unit for guests to use. It sort of vents out of the window, but they're bulky and they're expensive to run. And they also do a good job of cooling the room that they're in, but it didn't really transfer the cool air out to the living room and kitchen very well. We purchased this mini split on Amazon and I'm gonna be installing it myself this weekend. Tomorrow? Tomorrow. <laughs> You're running the air conditioner non-stop. It's freezing in here. This costs about $850 and then it'll take probably the best part of a day of my time. We'll link the mini split that we purchased for this project in the description box below, as well as a few YouTube videos that Steven watched to kind of brush up his skills before he took on this project, just in case you might want to tackle it yourself if you're handy. I did another mini split install last year at a property and this was a more like total DIY kit included everything you need. And this time I went with a more off-the-shelf model. Requires a few more steps to set up, but that's getting a little too detailed. Maybe we'll do a mini split install video in the future if you guys would like. The second project we'll be tackling before converting this unit into a midterm rental is making the bedroom more comfortable for a longer term stay. This unit is small. It's one bedroom, one bathroom, and about 460 square feet. And having a closet in the already small bedroom just taking up a lot of space. So knowing that most of our guests were just going to be there for, you know, two or three nights, we often opted instead for a sort of hanging bar from the ceiling using industrial pipes, a little DIY project we did. And then we put two luggage stands underneath the hanging bar. The nightstands that we have on either side of the bed are pretty small. They have a tiny kind of not really functional drawer. So I may be switching those out for something different, but we are definitely going to be adding a low dresser underneath where that hanging bar is. We'll also be adding a TV to this room, which is something we hadn't had in the past, but with people staying there longer, I figure it's a pretty easy add-on that might increased comfort of that guest. Previously, we just had one in the living room. And speaking of living room, the third change that we'll be making before we convert this unit into a midterm rental is switching out the sofa. When we first got started, we had a much looser belief about short-term rental occupancy limits. And so even though this is a pretty small space with one bedroom and one bath, we did set it up to allow four people to stay at one time. We were bed crammers. Basically. I am not sharing a bed. But four people is very tight in this space. We visit with our two little kids sometimes, and even with us, you know, with two kids, it's tight in there for a weekend, let alone a month. So as a midterm rental, we're really comfortable just saying the max occupancy is gonna be two people. The current couch also needs to go. It's five years old, looks like it's 10 years old. And the sofa bed that was once comfortable, the mechanisms kind of loosened up. It's not so comfortable anymore. At all. Since we had already taken a few summer bookings where we'd been advertising for four people though, we can't take this out until the end of summer in order to satisfy those people who expect the sofa. Sofa bed. Sofa bed. But we have taken this off of our listing so there's no confusion with future bookings and we'll be replacing the sofa before the first midterm rental guests arrive in September. Which we already did get yeah. bookings for midterm rental in the fall, which we were pleasantly happy about. We're also probably gonna add an air mattress, make it available to guests, in case they have a visitor come, which for monthly stays isn't uncommon. Or maybe we'll just get another sofa bed. I don't know, I, I honestly, I haven't really decided yet. But regardless on if we decide on a sofa or a sofa bed, we'll definitely be using our Host GPO membership to get a nice discount. If you haven't heard of Host GPO, it's 
a group purchasing organization where they use the power of the larger group to make discount agreements with vendors. Host GPO works with major brands like West Elm, CB2, Pottery Barn, Williams Sonoma, and more. Our full review of Host GPO is going to come soon in a future video, but we've already saved way more than our yearly subscription fee with just a few purchases we've made so far. So we've been buying all of our shampoo and conditioner and body wash products from Public Goods and saving 25%. We also bought some West Elm dining chairs for $80 a chair. And I just made a big rug purchase from Rugs USA, some water washable rug and when I put in that coupon code it took off $200. We'll leave a link in the video description if you want to check out Host GPO yourself. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss that Host GPO video. We'll probably release it once all of the things we've ordered have arrived. So to sum up this video, we are bummed that we don't have a short-term rental permit for this unit for the next two years, but overall we're really not that concerned. We anticipate bringing in between fifty dollars and $60,000 annually on this unit, which is a number that we're happy with. So let us know in the comments if you have experience with midterm rentals or if it's something you've been considering getting into for your investment property. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.